Hi, everyone. So um, it's good to be back, but it's also kind of hard being back because um, this became my home for the summer, and it really is home now. Um, and so while I'm home, I'm not really home, it kind of feels like. So um, today I just want to kind of tell you about the different ministries that Northwest does because there were so many things that I did while I was there and so many things that this mission does that we partner with and I won't even be able to tell you about all of them and the amount of things I'm about to tell you about it seems like a lot and it's just incredible the work that they do um, throughout their community and throughout Northwest Haiti. Um, so I'll kind of tell you about it through pictures that I have. Um, so there's an amazing medical program at the mission. They have surgery wings and two resident doctors, um, two Haitian resident doctors that are doing the residency at the mission. Um, and one of my first experiences with the mission was a surgery team that came in. And they did minor stuff. There are um, specialist teams that come in throughout the year. There's a neurology team and dental teams and just about every kind of um, medical aspect comes. Um, but the first group was kind of a general uh, medical team and they did a lot of hernia surgeries and a lot of cosmetic surgeries with um, like cysts and things. Um, and this little boy is one of the kids that they did a little work on. He had a few extra little fingers, a little few digits on each hand that didn't need to be there. Um, and so, as simple as that procedure was, the difference that it will make in his life and his family's is incredible, because any difference within Haiti is hugely emphasized and seen kind of as weird, and just culture doesn't exactly focus on differences there. Um, and so this photo is my photo to represent the birthing center. You guys heard a little bit about it from um, Melody last week. But this is a woman that I just kind of randomly met by chance. We do this thing called grocery ministry where we go and buy groceries and then we just walk and we let God lead us to a house. And so we just happened to come to Elisa's house and she had a huge family, multiple houses, um, and she was pregnant, like really pregnant. Like within that month, she was going to give birth. And so we kind of continued to go back and visit with them, and her family just welcomed us in. One day her husband climbed a tree for us and got coconuts down, cleaned them, cut them up, and then expected us to drink all of it. Um, and when we finished drinking it, he gave us a spoon. So, um, but she actually gave birth to her little girl uh, like two days after I left, which was a little sad, but I'm really glad that I was able to get pictures of everything. Um, but she lives up a mountain, which is so hard to climb up. It's so painful, that hike. I've never sweated more in my life. And she did it every day pregnant. And she walked down in labor to give birth. And she's not even the farthest away. These women come from miles and miles to come to the center and give birth and to receive the prenatal care that they provide. And so it's just one of those things that the mission does that has an amazing impact, because just about every kid within St. Louis has, was born at the mission, and so all of them have a connection there through that. So the next program is the nutrition program, which um, this little girl, she I think is in the preschool. She just graduated from the nutrition program, which starts kind of at toddler age, and then you go into the preschool, and then you'll go throughout the schooling that the mission provides, which is like all the way through senior year. And through that, you get two meals a day as you enter the program, and then the school will provide you with a meal every day. Um, and nutrition is obviously a huge problem there. Um, I received the really sad news that three of these kiddos had passed away since I've been home. Um, because as much as the mission can do, it really is on the family and on them to come and get that help. And sometimes it's hard to reach out and get it. Um, but this sweet little girl, she was always at the mission. Her grandmother also received assistance. And then her aunt is part of the special needs outreach program because her aunt has Down syndrome. And so I would see them all the time. And we became really good friends. And... Yeah, I don't know her name because all she would ever call me is Hey You, so that's all I ever called her. So that's Hey You, girl. 
Um, then there's the Grand Moon, which is the elderly um, center. Grand Moon literally translated, translates to old people, so not an offensive thing there. They make a lot of jokes about death, in fact. Um, they're a pretty comedic group. They're always just a joy to be around. They're funny and lively. And so this photo is from our beach day, which was crazy. They were swimming in the water. I had an old man pretend to drown so I would save him. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're, they're some of the craziest, but so fun. And when I went down to like see them and like leave, they were like, I had an old woman sobbing, but they were all like, say hello to your family. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you again. And they're just such great people. Um, but the elderly home is kind of like an assistive living. They come and go as they please. They all have their own farms and animals that they take care of, but the mission just provides them with community and nurses and medical care and food and just kind of that community that they need. So there are two programs that I spent a lot of time in and that I personally dove into ministry in, and one of them was the orphanage. And the orphanage has about 80 kids give or take a few, um, 40 boys, 40 girls. And the age range is from like five to 18. And when you turn 18, you, um, trans like you transition out of the mission. And usually you go and you live with family, you continue schooling if that's what you wanna do. Um, but all of the kids, as they get prepared to leave the mission, they have to go through trade school. And it's a really awesome thing that they do because they all will leave with a skill and they'll all leave having something that they can do for work. And so this is one of my good friends, Enoch. He is going to trade school and doing electrical work, um, but he is an amazing just engineer and craftsman. Um, at 17, he rewired all of the lights outside their like area so that they could have lighting outside. But in doing so, he took all the lighting out of the inside. Um, <laughs> But it's just so like amazing to see like the gifts that they have. So he actually is hoping to be an electrical engineer, and I I don't doubt that he could do so much more than that. Um, here he is. Oh, sorry. Can you go back real quick? So in this picture, he's fixing Gilbert's bike, and Gilbert is one of the um, kids in the Merriam Center, um, and to fix this bike, he like brought out 20 different bike chains and fit them all to it. He has like a really random supplies, but he can fix anything. So these are the youngest guys in the orphanage. I spent a lot of time with the boys in the orphanage, mostly because I miss my brothers, and they were a lot like them. Um, and so, and the girls are kind of mean, they're kind of like middle school girls, all of them. And so it's kind of hard to like go back to that. Um, but this is, um, Moses, the youngest in the blue, he's five years old, and then Sun Sun. Um, Moses actually got his name because he was left somewhere in a basket, just like Moses, and was very, like, very honorably given the name Moses by one of the staff members. So he has been entirely raised at the mission. Um, yeah, but he's, he's sweet. He speaks only, like, he speaks English fluently, but he will never speak to you in English. But he and Sun Sun speak English so well that Sun Sun goes on family vacation and will only speak English with his family, which is hysterical because they're like, we're trying to spend time with you, kid. And he's like, oh, I don't know what you're saying. I don't speak Creole. So I spent a lot of time with the boys. Um, I played a lot of basketball, which I'm not that bad, surprisingly. Um, but I played basketball because I'm so bad at soccer. Um, you can go to the next picture. They would play soccer every day, and if they had me play, they would just like put me in the goal, and I would just kind of stand there, and then they laugh when I got hit by the ball. Um, but every day they had a different championship game going on with soccer, and it got really elaborate. So like one day they were like jogging around their track, like jogging around their field. They sweep the field, by the way, before games. Um, and then they kind of like sprinkle it down with water and sometimes they line it with like chalk and then they have the national anthem play and they stay in the middle. And then one time they had an announcer with a, with a microphone and it just got even more elaborate from there. So this is the Merriam Center. 
which is actually where I spent most of my time. These kids are really, really special to me. So the Merriam Center is a special needs orphanage at the mission. It houses, houses about 35 kids with a really large range of disabilities. So um, for example, the boy in the blue shorts, kind of in the middle, throwing up some peace signs, that's Wadley. We became friends because he was wearing a blues hockey shirt, which if you all know, it's Micah's favorite team. And so immediately we became really good friends. He had no idea what hockey was. Um, but he actually came to live at the mission about a year ago because he has muscular dystrophy and has lost the ability to walk. And it's really, really kind of sad and hard um, to watch him because he's just like all the other boys in the orphanage. He wants to play soccer, he wants to play, but he just can't. And unfortunately, his muscle ability will just go from here. Um, and then my absolute best friend while I was at the mission is the guy standing in the back cheesing really hard. Um, and it's Steven, and he has cerebral palsy. Um, and I just had a great time with Steven. He taught me sign language because he's super nonverbal. He, um, he like will talk, but you can't really make out a lot of what he's saying. But he was kind of like my defender amongst all the boys because they make fun of me a lot. And he'd be like, no, like guys, like we don't need to make fun of Reagan. And so, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the Merriam Center. Um, another aspect of the Merriam Center is their outreach program, um, which I kind of talked about with the girl. Um, the nutrition center girl whose, sister, her, whose aunt was in the outreach program. But this is program, so the Merriam Center started taking in a lot of kids. There was 70 kids living there at one point. And they realized that as they were taking in kids, that their parents really didn't want to give them up, but they were giving them up because they couldn't care for them and they couldn't provide them with the care and medical treatment that they needed with their special needs. And so through the outreach program, they kind of are enabling these parents to take care of their children on their own with support from the mission. So they provide them with the finances to go through medical care. They provide them with therapy and just a lot of support for the families. Um, so this is one little girl that I met while I was there who has hydrocephalus, which is where your brain kind of like water kind of goes in the brain and your brain gets really big, like really big, really big heads. And if you don't stop it, it's fatal. But luckily, the, there is a neurosurgeon who comes to the mission now and provides shunts, which is how you treat hydrocephalus. And it's such a blessing that he's able to go and do this. And just, so this is one of the girls who has a shunt and she, her life expectancy goes up so much with that ability. And then this little guy, his name is Julian. I had to hike up a mountain to see him. He is an orphan who lives with his grandmother. His parents passed away in a bus accident, and he was in it as well. So Julian is actually four years old, which might be kind of hard to believe based on his size. He's pretty much the size of a newborn, maybe a little bit bigger. But he has all the capabilities of a baby. Um, despite his age. And so they think that there was something that might have happened in the accident that kind of stunted the growth and probably some mental things going on before that. But he can put a smile on anyone's face. He is one of the cutest kids. Um, and to see the love that his grandmother has for him is so amazing. So as an intern this summer, my role was to basically work with the short-term groups. As I told you, like I was my dad's boss for a week. Not really, I didn't have to boss them around. But um, this is one of the teams I had the opportunity to work with while I was there, and it was a really great opportunity to kind of dive into aspects of ministry in Haiti that I wouldn't do on my own. So I spent um, a few days in a town called Le Bay with them, and kind of like Mayette, it's in the middle of nowhere, really dry, but it's actually a fishing village. Um, and similar to Mayette, it's a neighbor's project. And while we were there, we did a clinic. And I'm not a medical person at all. I don't deal with blood. I, I can't do any of that. Um, but while I was there, I was able to meet this little boy named Marco. So I went to Le Bay twice during my time in Haiti. And the first time I went, I met Marco. And he came to come hang out with us completely naked. <laughs> and all the other boys were making fun of him because he had really bad scabies, which is kind of a skin um, bug kind of thing, and it's really hard to treat. It's very similar to lice. 
And if you don't have it, it'll go through your whole family, and it's just really uncomfortable. And all the kids kept making fun of him and telling me that he was sick and that I shouldn't touch him. Um, but I really enjoyed spending time with Marco. And so when I got back with this team doing the clinic, we brought medicine to be able to treat scabies. And so first thing I did when I got to La Bay was like, all right, who knows Marco? I had a little boy go, oh, the sick kid. And I was like, mm-hmm, that's him. Can you go get him for me? And they brought me his entire family, and we were able to give them all treatment. And so hopefully when I go back, I'll be able to see him and see how well he's doing with that. Um, and so this is a picture of Stephen, who I was telling you about a little bit ago, and John, um, and just kind of the impact that they have had on me this summer. So. They are such an amazing group of kids, and it's such an underlooked part of Haitian culture, the special needs kids. They're often um, just really looked down on or seen as different and used in different aspects of voodoo. Um, and a lot of them receive like voodoo medical treatment, which makes things worse. Um, and so kind of learning about that side of Haitian culture and being with the outreach program and being with them kind of enlightened me to look further into that aspect of things and made me want to pursue um, more knowledge and things in that realm. But um, it also kind of this summer showed me that while I've always intended to go into missions and that's always been a goal of mine, um, it's just moved up a lot on my calendar. Um, and I know that as soon as I possibly can, I will be serving abroad and doing what I love with these people. Um, now, I'm not going to be dropping out of school or anything and go move to Haiti just yet. But I am hoping to return this winter and see all my friends and continue building these relationships. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all for your support in me doing that because it's really hard to go and travel abroad and be away from family and friends and your church home. And it's so helpful when you have the support and encouragement from your church and from your family to go and do that. And it was really hard because I met a lot of people who were serving there who didn't have that. And they really struggled to know like if this is what God wants them to do. But you guys have never made that a question for me, and I know this is what God's plan is. And yeah, I just wanted to give you all a huge thank you for your support as I have done this. Awesome. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you.